Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you are attending the uh, 4.30 VIP tour of the Connectathon. For one, those who want to know more about the Connectathon, we want to uh, share with you uh, some of the, uh, of, the, of the thing which is happening behind the scene. The Connectathon is uh, not a new endeavor. You've seen the little label that says uh, 20 year. And uh, this is the history trail of Connectathon as they have traveled uh, across Europe uh, in many countries, many uh, cities. You can expect uh, that we've learned a lot in uh, having those uh, hundreds and hundreds of people being involved and system being tested. And that's what I would like to share with you this uh, morning. My name is Charles Perizo. I'm the chair of IG Services, which is the operational arm, arm of IG Europe. We are uh, providing services and helping implementers of a large uh, project generally uh, that have uh, a dedicated activity on interoperability where we provide um, our experience sharing from project to projects and helping them to be uh, very efficient. Uh, this activity is transferring now from an entity from an IG services to an entity called IG Catalyst becoming actually an international uh, activity because many of our customers are actually from outside Europe. So we want to be covering both Europe and the rest of the world. The Connectathon has a few secrets and we are very happy to share them with you. Uh, the first one is that uh, we have to take interoperability in chunks, in bytes. If it's uh, too big of a byte and you try to swallow too much interoperability to do too many things at once, you typically choke and this is true uh, for IG, it's also true for projects. So having a use case, something which is very useful, which is understood by the user, a problem that people face and want to solve, that's uh, what we call a use case. The term was actually more or less introduced by IG. That's something we recycled from UML uh, with a much more specific meaning uh, to uh, uh, to the world of healthcare and health delivery. Once we have a use case, we have a profile that support this use case. Sometimes we need several profiles, but typically it's one or two or three. And uh, being then profile centric mean we agree to the problem. We can recognize the problem and we have an agreed solution, a set of standards uh, that are typically widely available standards uh, grouped in a detailed specification that the implementers can uh, digest, understand, implement, and say, hmm, I'm wondering if I'm implementing this. Uh, would somebody implementing the complementary part or the complementary actor in that profile would be able to interoperate? It is the goal. That's a goal that has to be proven. And want to prove this at a connectathon using real world implementation. We want to take people that have product working open source solution and, and that say, hey, I want to add, extend my interoperability and use those standards according to an IG profile. And by being real world, we prove that this interoperability can be developed in a wide range of products but more importantly, that those products can interoperate. And sometimes they don't. And you know why? Because the IG profile is not sufficiently precise or a little details have been, a little detail has been forgotten here and that need to be corrected, that need to be refined. So we learn by implementation and by bringing uh, 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 implementation that are real world product level um, we reach that point much faster. And last but not least, the Connectathon is operated 
and need to be operated with rigor because testing is something which has value only if you are rigorous. We offer to and ask participants to perform a number of pre-tests just to check that they feel ready. And we, when we see that they're not ready, we basically advise them not to show up or don't show up for this profile. You're not ready, you have too many gaps. Then during the connectathon, following a rigorous test plans and being actually monitored by neutral party, we will discuss this further in the next slides. So this test rigor is an important point that we want to uh, highlight here by saying we are using predefined test plans. You don't come with your ID on how to test. IG has thought through the profile, has defined a test plan and says everybody will use the same specification, the same IG profile and will test it the same way. Therefore, the tests are objective, reasonably thorough. They become more purposeful as we move from connectathon to connectathon, as we gain experience in testing this profile. And we ask participant, the second point, to not test only with their friend, they can do that, but to test with different implementation, different test parties of different country. And this is proven quite effective at uh, highlighting gaps in implementation and lack of understanding of what the profile actually specifies. And sometimes, as I say, it allows us to correct our profile or to correct the standard that is underneath the profile, the standards. Then the monitors, they are neutral, they validate, they are in a sense, the judge. And to do this, they will use again the Gazelle test tool where the test plans are being recorded, but the execution of the test plan is recorded and this test management platform is delivering um, as people test uh, the necessary uh, rigor. And having uh, the Gazelle tool in the middle allows us to track things, to be objective, allows people to interact, whether in a room as it has been for many, many years, and now in a remote fashion. Yes, we know that participating to a connectathon is, a, is an implementation effort, but what's most important is that when you participate to a connectathon, when the staff of vendors is participating to connectathon, when users provide monitors that oversee the connectathon, you realize a few critical elements. You have to collaborate. You cannot do interoperability alone. That seems absurd. That's what many people believe. They say, I did the interface. I tested in my lab. I'm done. Thank you very much. No. Unless you learn how to collaborate, you're never going to be good at interoperability. And that's a critical lesson that we have to not only learn, but practice. And this is practiced in a connectathon. You need the help of others to best understand the profile, to best understand the underlying standards, to actually ask questions. And we have uh, many implementers uh, that are uh, using the Connectathon as a learning experience. It's a collective learning experience. And it is uh, also realizing the value of an IG profile. I had standards. Why do I need, in addition, an IG profile? I can combine the standards and do. No, 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 because you discover also rapidly that the same use case can be addressed by the same standards in different ways. Therefore, uh, uh, doing it the IG profile way, you realize the value of a profile. And this is true uh, in the sense also for the users and for the uh, user need that are addressed in a consistent way and therefore in an interoperable way. If we step back a few steps, we're going to discover that the IG profile are designed to be international in scope so that there is a minimum effort of national adaptation or local adaptation. We do this to ensure reuse. We also recognize that some adaptation will be needed and typically we leave a few area um, to adapt or to extend uh, 
uh, with national policies, national rules. In developing the profile, we think of testing the profile. And this is what happens with the Gezer test tools. Uh, and we have a large team around the world, well beyond the Gezer team itself, that is developing and maintaining the test tool that you will find in the Gezer toolbox. It's an open source toolbox. It's very important because we believe that people should be able to easily use those tools and use those test tools to accelerate deployment in the process of testing, as well as in the ability to thoroughly examine the transactions or the content of objects that are being exchanged. In total, this is the minimiza, minimizing deployment risk, which is what everything wants to do. Not only the vendor, not only the users when they buy a product deemed interoperable, not only the health authority when they are trying to promote interoperability. So the IG profile are therefore a critical element in order to make sure that we, you, buy, you take a specification which is widely used, proven, best fitted with standards that are best fitted to meet the need. You pick a profile for a use case, you have another use case, you pick other profiles, you can uh, uh, combine in the profile different standard in a very clear way. Many of those profiles, 27 of them have been recognized by the European Commission for procurement and are widely used in projects that are moving, for example, information across border and many other things across Europe and beyond Europe. It has been indeed proven by millions of patients. Um, today, in America alone, we have about 150 million patients that have their record exchanged every day, every hour using IG profile. This is the same in many uh, countries across Europe and outside of Europe, the profile are used widely and this is a legacy, a proof uh, of their value. So when we want to do interoperability, the standard is important and need to be robust. But it is not because this is a better standard, this is the best standard or whatever that you've solved your problem. This is a necessary step that we know and we have learned that standards are good because they are generic. They can be used across many use cases. However, they are too generic quite often, so they need to be specialized and in a, in, a, in a very effective way and targeted to the use case. Being fit to the use case is important. Um, and uh, people think like they thought with HL7 V2 that no, 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 I'll do myself my own profile. No, no, I don't need IG. Oh, I'll do my uh, uh, Firebase specification. Yeah, yeah, you can do this. However, you'll do your own. You'll do one of a kind and you'll discover that you've done narrow interoperability, interoperability within the small context of your project. The product cannot be easily reused. So we need IG profile in fire and, and, and IG has already over, well over 30, 35 profile um, based on HL7 fire. So many of the use cases can be addressed using this standard, but also other standards. Being profiled, is critical to quality. And that's what we are trying to help and bring in a very open, flexible process, the IG uh, Connectathon. You will see that there are all, also other testing support that IG provides, but we are focusing today on the Connectathon. The Connectathon has a few challenges. One of them is to be uh, held online, and that has been a constraint for the last uh, last uh, year and two uh, and tr maintaining trust and collaboration is a challenge is when you are online and that's something that we want to try to reproduce as much as possible the face-to-face -face experience the fluidity of being able to step up and interact with the entity the system you're testing with and solve the challenge you have the integrity bug that you stumble down and decide whether it's on your side or on the other side. New challenges come, the uh, connectivity, the physical connectivity through proxies and various places and labs and, and, 
an intranet, an internet uh, uh, indeed can be a barrier. And we try to lower this with uh, early testing of the uh, physical connectivity uh, before the connectathon actually uh, starts. We've also personalized uh, the Gazel tool uh, so that it is combined uh, with uh, video conferencing and chat tools uh, to make communi the communication as easy as possible between the parties. And we want to dive into further detail and give you uh, uh, an understanding and some witness uh, on this. This uh, edition of the Connectathon Online uh, uh, regroup 100, over 100 participants with the 30 system. Um, we have less attendance because it's online. Many people tell us I will come when the Connectathon will be back in presence. We understand this, uh, but there are still some testing that has to progress, and that's why we are holding this online connectathon. And the 11 European countries are testing, 45 profiles are being tested across various uh, domain of use cases from public health to hospital centric to personal health to international information sharing. We'll see an example of this later in this presentation. 31 monitors from seven European countries, plus the USA, Turkey, and Gabon in uh, uh, Africa, to name uh, a few uh, non-European that are uh, providing the staffing for those monitors. We want to recognize those monitors. They are all volunteers. Uh, they come with their expertise in various area, various uh, groups of profiles, and they help us uh, bring this neutrality and this efficiency in uh, performing their work. And uh, Steve Moore in a minute will explain to us um, how this uh, uh, work is being uh, performed and how critical it is that they are thorough, neutral and fair uh, in their assessment of each test case, case after case throughout the week. So let's take a few tour. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, traveling through various aspects of the Connectathon. Speak first of the Gazelle tool itself, uh, listen to a vendor experience, um, and understand a little bit how do we uh, use the result of a Connectathon as an implementer, as a user. And then you will be glad to answer your, your questions. So the Gazelle management platform is a platform that is widely used and that has been created initially for the Connectathon, but it has now found many other usage. It's performing various kinds of testing, conformity assessment, where you actually have a, uh, you take a product, which is a version, very precise, and you run it again, uh, a test bench running specific tests and according to those tests, you issue a label, a conformity assessment test report, and IHE knows how to do that and has been doing this for uh, uh, several products and several profiles. The Projectathon is moving testing to a specific project, and it's typically uh, testing against uh, specification that are IHE based and that are uh, uh, refining those with a few national uh, specific constraints, for example, on patient identification or on security and privacy policy. And the Gazelle platform is also used in EF projects uh, to support the deployment pre-production testing. For example, the European EHDSI cross-border project is using the Gazelle platform uh, for its testing across countries in Europe, all of this managed by the European Commission. So we are very happy uh, to actively support uh, this testing. It's also used by the vendors in-house to do their product development, to participate to the Connectathon, of course. That's what we're doing, they are doing this week. And also to uh, uh, take conformity assessment for their product. So the profile are in a sense programmed with the tools and the processes to test uh, in the IG Gazelle platform, which is standard and profile sensitive and uh, support those interoperability specification that deliver the final quality in a deployment project 
when the IT profiles are being deployed. So many aspects of Gazelle that are beyond what we do today, but it's important that there is a powerful tool uh, here that we are using, and this is greatly helping uh, the testing. I would like now to hand over uh, the presentation to Steve Moore, uh, who was one of the creator of Gazelle, who has a wide experience in uh, performing uh, uh, Connectathon and who like me has been in IG Connectathon since the first one. Welcome, Steve. We want to listen to you. Uh, thank you, Charles. Um, when I I'll go through these first slides uh, and I'll be brief. Uh, this is going to be in the context of the international patient summary. I believe Charles will pick up on that theme a little bit later uh, when he resumes uh, his part. But uh, when I refer to IPS, that's the international patient summary. Uh, in my role as a technical project manager, the first thing I do is I read the IG profile, in this case, IPS. Um, from that, I extract requirements that are placed on systems. And then I define a test strategy and the test cases, and I enter that into a web-based system called the Gazelle Master Model. The Master Model is a database that models IHE profiles, actors, transactions, and options. Um, it has a web UI that I enter that information. And I also it also manages the test cases. Um, a Connectathon participant, participant logs into the Gazelle Test Management System, which is separate from there. Um, They've already registered for their testing session and they find a work list that is tailored to them based on their registration. They work through the test cases for all of their registered profiles. And again, IPS is but one example. They complete each individual test and mark it complete. One of our volunteer monitors, uh, who also is working from a Gazelle test management work list, will claim an item, review the test evidence uh, entered by the participants in that test, or they might review in person. And when they are satisfied that that test is complete, they will enter their assessment of that individual test case. They will mark that test case as verified and move on to the next one. At the end of each day and uh, at the end of the Connectathon week, technical project managers will grade each profile actor combination for each participant. So we sum up the test instances that have been assessed by the monitors, and we do a final evaluation. Uh, next slide, please. Ah. Yep, thank you. Oh, uh, you were there then? Great. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a dashboard that is seen by test participants, and it shows um, a subset of the test for them uh, sorted by profile and actor. So on the left is the name of the test they need to run. On the right is some metadata that tells them how many tests to run and is also an active dashboard of showing tests that are in progress or possibly tests that are created. So when they're looking for their detailed view of the tests to run, this is what they are looking at in the Gazelle Test Management platform. As Charles mentioned, when we started this 20 years ago, we did not have Gazelle. And so we used the equivalent of large uh, pieces of paper, post-it notes on the, on the walls and kept track of it that way, which was certainly not very efficient. Uh, next slide, please. This is another uh, web, another screen capture um, of a dashboard that the participants see. It is a high level view of their overall test progress for the IPS profile. And as they complete their work for these various actor option combinations, um, I will mark them complete and the individual rows will turn green to say they are done. So it gives them a quick look. And one thing I want to point out is the rightmost column, which says option. And I want to call your attention to the fourth row, which says IPS creator fire. For the international patient summary, um, HL7, has created both a FHIR version and a CDA version. And this particular vendor is registered to test the FHIR version. HL7 has defined both versions and IHE has profiled both versions because many institutions have a large investment in CDA and we wanna make sure that investment is protected and just say, nope, sorry, um, you have to use the FHIR version. So the IPS 
integration profile in IHE specifies both versions. A vendor in their integration statement can indicate which one they support and a purchaser will then know if they're gonna have the FHIR version, the CDA version or both. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is um, figure is taken from the HL7 documentation. Uh, we are focusing our tests on the required sections in the IPS document. And so the, those required sections are the three in red, medication summary, allergies and intolerance, allergies and tolerances and problem list. So there uh, are defined data sets that I retrieved from Trillium Bridge project with the help of a friend. And that uh, supplies the test data for, these, for this year's testing. Two of our participants decided to take it a step further without any requests from me, and they're adding immunizations to their test data. So that's highlighted with another red arrow. So I'd like to commend them for taking that step to do some additional work, which is one of the benefits of being together and having focus for the week in a connectathon. You have the attention of your test partner. In this case, the two agreed to add immunizations. Um, and they're doing that privately without any instruction from the project managers. So I recommend them for that extra work. Charles, I will stop there and return back to you. Charles, you are muted. Thank you very much. Uh, that uh, is always useful to have a Closed loop, that's why you need to test. <laughs> We've proven it uh, over and over. Uh, so the international patient summary uh, is the example that Steve uh, followed in uh, showing uh, how Gazelle was used. Um, and I want to dive a little bit in uh, further detail about this uh, international patient summary. Um, and here a vendor experience in performing that testing. We want to indeed know uh, what the vendor tested and how he tested and how does he feel about the testing and the test tools and the testing experience uh, that he um, uh, enjoy or <laughs> feared <laughs> during um, the week. Uh, Steve was, um, uh, has introduced this picture and uh, uh, indeed the uh, IPS composition builds in itself um, the various uh, area of information that are required, recommended, and optional. And through uh, those various levels, you can actually align, uh, build a very generic receivers that will be able to swallow and ingest any of those uh, elements. The uh, IG, I, uh, IPS profile has been broadened uh, to address uh, both plan and unplanned care, which was the initial topic of the IPS profile by Chelsea and Sen, but we've extended uh, further uh, in terms of uh, use cases. Uh, we've removed some variation, and this is what the profile is all about. This profile has been first tested at this connectathon. This is why we would like to hear. Uh, from Umberto uh, Capellini, uh, from uh, Gnomon, um, a little bit more. What have you uh, uh, tested and what was your testing experience, Umberto? Hi, Charles. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can give you yes. presentation. Great. Thank you, Charles. Uh, it's Umberto here. I will share my screen. Uh, oh. I don't have apparently rights to share screen at the moment. Maybe you can do that for me. Okay, you can share your screen now. Great, thank you. So uh, my name is Umberto Capellini. Uh, I'm a, a technical product manager for a, for a company named uh, Dedalus. It's an Italian company, it's an international company actually, uh, headquartered in Florence, Italy. And uh, we are participating to this connectathon with multiple uh, 
actors and transactions and multiple teams across uh, various countries, so in Italy, Austria, and, and France. Uh, I'm sitting now in, in Vienna, Austria. I'm, I'm part of the uh, Austrian team in, the, in, the, in this case. So uh, IPS, uh, I want just to show, to show quickly the, uh, what we call in, in IHE the, the diagram about IPS. Uh, this is a, a, as a, is a content profile. So we're talking about content uh, and we have somebody, an actor creating that content and somebody consuming that content. Uh, for this kind of profiles, I actually doesn't, doesn't uh, specify in which way this uh, message or this, this information it's, it's transferred from one, from the creator to the consumer. This is a topic for multiple other profiles, obviously, of IG. Uh, in this specific profile, again, we talk about content. content. And uh, as Steve was saying, uh, uh, content for an international pension summary can be delivered uh, in two different ways on uh, using a uh, HL7 uh, CDA documents or uh, fire composition resources. Uh, as, as a company, as Dedalus, we are supporting both of those, of those options. So we're supporting, supporting both CDA and fire uh, as a content consumer. So we are on this right side of this, uh, of this diagram. So Reto, show... you're not sharing your screen uh, oh. yet. I'm not sharing. Uh, it shows that you are the one uh, speaking, so you... Sorry about uh, that. But we are not seeing your screen. Now it's coming. Yes. Sorry about Perfect. that. <laughs> I was... You, you didn't lose too much. Uh, I just was showing just this, this uh, IG diagram about content creator, something in the middle that makes the data go to, from A to B, and a content consumer consuming and showing, uh, rendering this data. So uh, yeah, I will move, move now to our product, which is called the uh, Passion Synoptic. It's, it's a, pro a product for, uh, for showing like uh, a synoptic or a summary of, of uh, patient clinical information, it's patient centric as most of the information into IHE. I will search now for the test patients that we are using here in the Connectaton. And, uh, and those are the two test patients, uh, Mary Jains and uh, Charles Merlot. I'm going for Mary. And here we have a, yeah, we have a, a widget. Uh, this is, a, as a, a Steve and Charles were saying, uh, this is a first time that we are testing this. It, it, it's a new profile. So uh, the, the, the support for this profile is still in a, in a let's say, beta version. So we, we just created a, for, uh, for supporting this profile a new widget into the patient synoptic. Uh, specifically for supporting FHIR-based uh, uh, IPS, so patient summaries. So we, here we, we would have a list of documents to, for this patient. In this case, we have only one, one list. We are pointing to, uh, to the FHIR repository of, uh, of the source of this uh, information, which is uh, Gnomon. So click on view. It opens uh, a view, uh, let's say a rend rendered view of, of this information. Uh, the structure information. So we have all the typical sections of, of, a, of a patient summary. So we have uh, initially a patient information, the medications, allergy, active problems. And uh, as Steve was saying before, we were also, because it's up to date, <laughs> we were setting uh, immunization information. So uh, some va vaccination information. This is tetanus. For the other patient, we were adding uh, uh, the COVID. Uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination. It's something that we are going to use on the field for, for, uh, for uh, obviously for giving up uh, to, to, the, to the user, to the operator, uh, to the health operator, uh, an overview of uh, a summary overview of the clinical information for this patient. And this is what, what uh, related to fire. We have also uh, have the chance to test in these uh, days, uh, the CDA version. CDA is a little bit different because uh, we store this information into an XTS uh, repository. Uh, it's as, as, as again, uh, uh, it's not, we are talking about content here. So uh, which report is, repository we are using is not the focus of this test, but we are, we are using a 
test repository for this. So we imported the CDA into our this repository and it's showing up here as a as a document for this patient. So clicking on the open document button and we, we are going to open. So th this is uh, the, the view is, is uh, slightly different, the uh, rendered view, because for uh, each CDA, each, each uh, let's say, uh, a, a rendering uh, style sheet for, a, for a, a, any specific type of CDA would be different. So we choose for, for this, in this case, this kind of uh, style sheet. But if the content, uh, and we are talking about content here, is exactly the same. So we have a, a patient summary and, a, a, sorry, patient information and province medication and so on. Uh, this is coming from, a, from the company, which is called, uh, uh, it's called, I don't remember now, I'm sorry about that, uh, EZ Carpet. So this is the, the company who's providing us uh, CDAs. So that's uh, all about it. Obviously, uh, this is our all digital <laughs> and online connectathon. Uh, we would be glad, as, uh, as Charles said, to be live in a, in a place where we, as we did in the previous 20 years. We hope that next year we will do the same. We will meet again in person. But uh, I, th I think uh, my vendor experience for this digital connectathon is quite good. We had some good, uh, good sharing of information between vendors and the, and the test are going smooth on our case. So yeah, Charles, I will give you back the ball. Sharing, uh, you're mute, Charles. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and sorry for being uh, uh, mute again. Um, the company you received your uh, uh, CDA from, EasyCare Tech, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is a Korean uh, company based in Korea. So, uh, you know, yesterday in a VIP tour, we had uh, uh, somebody some, uh, from Greece receiving uh, uh, the patient summary from uh, Umberto's company, and here Umberto receives it from uh, the Korean. Um, that's what happened in a connectathon, and this is uh, precisely uh, the benefit of the connectathon: is you test with unexpected parties, uh, so that you have the broader exposure and you reveal as uh, many issues as possible. Because people are happy when they find issues in a connectathon, because those issues are not going to be found um, when their products is deployed when it is actually being used. So, how do we use? Now, the result of the connectathon, because you may not be a vendor, but you may be a user and you say, hmm, I'm excited about the connectathon, but what do I do with the outcome? You access the outcome, you use the outcome of the connectathon. Um, you have a, a, a result browser that you have in the upper left here, where you select which connectathon, which vendor, which profile you're interested in. Um, and you can even do a lot of custom browsing uh, throughout the Connectathon result database so that you find the list of vendors you're interested in uh, for a given profile, for example. And vertically here, it shows the various actors that are defining the profile that will be capable uh, to, uh, to interact. And if you take one of those vendors, you see that there are some little stars for certain actor, it means that the vendor in its product tested those four actors here. Um, other vendor tested some of the other actor because that's what their products were intended to do. Uh, so that's how you can understand the support you're getting from those vendors and their capability to actually have uh, joined the connectathon, the desire they have to interpret. Um, with other and their ability, their technical ability to implement uh, their, this profile and to uh, prove to themselves and to you and the world um, that uh, the, the profile works and that it is uh, well supported uh, by their product. The next step you can take uh, is actually uh, folding uh, the IG, the use case um, into uh, the um, uh, and the steps you have to go through in dealing with interoperability into a project 
ranging from policy alignment uh, to a testing strategy, to doing your interoperability specification, to procuring interoperability. So if you worry about procuring interoperability, you can open this box and you will be given some practical advice on how to use, how to reference IG profile uh, in your procurement. Uh, if you're interested in collecting requirements, open this box and you will be explained on how to document your use case um, and to reference IG profile in your interoperability specification. So feel free to use this resource. We think it's a useful resource uh, to map uh, the uh, deployment uh, of effective interoperability um, in your uh, projects. This is on the IG Europe website um, under IG Europe use case implementation. So it's time for answers and questions. Please feel free uh, to uh, bring your question, your challenge. We'll be very happy uh, to, uh, to answer those. So I thought I saw some question. Yes, there is one from Steve. There, okay. So uh, Steve is asking you a question. Are CDA and FAR version equivalent in the international patient summary? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, they have been designed to have the very same content the very same uh, clinical detail, the very same coding uh, of those uh, clinical information uh, elements. Uh, and the goal here is to be able to translate one into the other easily without, uh, without loss. Uh, another question. I heard a rumor that some of the monitors are working together in REN. Is that true? Uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, with the uh, end of COVID in sight, uh, we offered uh, to monitors to get together uh, with the uh, test managers and they are uh, operating uh, together um, in the same large room um, in, a REN, in what we call our online uh, operation uh, center. That is the place where uh, people call in, interact and uh, get the testing uh, orchestrated. Are there other questions that uh, you would have and that you would like uh, to uh, discuss now? If not, I understand we are slightly over our time limit, 13 minutes, yeah, that's more than slight. Uh, but I hope that you had uh, and you received the useful uh, information about the Connectathon. We thank you for your participation and encourage you to attend uh, the uh, third and last day of the IG Experience uh, Conference. Uh, that's those sessions are being held uh, tomorrow mor morning, starting at 10 o'clock uh, until. Uh, Five. You have two more VIP tours if you want to engage some of your colleagues and advise them to attend. They are welcome to register on the IG Europe website. Uh, it's open, it's free, and we will be happy to welcome them uh, to a VIP tour uh, tomorrow, either at 11.30 or at uh, 4.30. And finally, at 5, uh, we have a celebration for the 20 years anniversary, and we want a celebration also for the participant to the Connectathon that will finish on Friday, uh, but that have already done a good amount of work and that need to be uh, given an opportunity to rejoice. We would be face to face. Uh, we would enjoy a nice dinner and some drinks and a buffet and a get together because it's important that we work as a team and that's what we want to create. Create through Aichi, um, interoperability between people, because we know that interoperability between people is creating interoperability between systems and within healthcare. Thank you very much for your attention.